Many readers are taken aback when they come across the strange riddle of Samson in the Book of Judges while reading through the history, law, poetry, and prophecy of the Old Testament. Riddles, enigmatic sayings, and proverbs are not limited to the Book of Judges and certainly not to Israel's boorish and brazen final judge. However, the nature of this riddle and its connection to the somewhat enigmatic man who delivered it warrant further investigation. But what does Samson's riddle mean? Why did he give it? And what can we learn about him from it? Samson is one of the most well-known names in the Bible, and he was probably the most popular of the judges before the anointing of Israel's kings. Though widely regarded as a biblical and Israelite hero, Samson's moral inconsistencies, violent behavior, and inability to resist temptation make him a complex figure. Having said that, despite his many flaws, Samson played an important role in God's plan for Israel's deliverance. Samson, like many of Israel's judges, was called upon to deliver God's people in their hour of need. Of course, as was often the case after Joshua's death, Israel sinned and God delivered them into the hands of a foreign adversary. Judges chapter 13 verse 1 Again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, so the Lord delivered them into the hands of the Philistines for 40 years. God, on the other hand, would provide a way out in the form of an anointed military leader known as a judge. The Israelites had been hounded for 40 years by the Philistines, a seafaring people who had migrated from somewhere in the Aegean Sea, possibly near modern-day Crete, to Canaan's Mediterranean coast. With their advanced iron weapons, innovative technology, and aggressive military tactics, the Philistines invaded, harassed, and oppressed the children of Israel. At this point, the Bible introduces us to a man named Manoah, whose wife was unable to conceive. Her barrenness was beyond her control, but it was completely under the control of the all-powerful God of the universe. He was getting ready to do something extraordinary in her life. The Lord's angel appeared to her and said, You will give birth to a son. Judges chapter 13 verse 3. And that son, that miracle, would be Israel's next deliverer. When you're discouraged and unable to see your way out of a difficult situation, seek God and inquire about what He is up to behind the scenes. He will not necessarily remove the source of your frustration, but He never does anything without a reason. Your difficult circumstances may be an opportunity for God to work miraculously in your life and conform you to the image of Christ. This promised child would grow up and begin to deliver Israel from the grip of the Philistines. With this role came a job requirement not shared by the other judges. The angel instructed Manoah's wife to raise the child in accordance with the Nazarite vow. As explained in Numbers chapter 6 verses 1 through 21, this meant he couldn't drink wine or beer or cut his hair. However, the angel advised the woman not to drink wine or beer or eat anything unclean while she was pregnant. That meant her son was to be consecrated to God as a Nazarite even while still in the womb. Every moral issue we face in our culture has a spiritual component to it. Samson's renowned physical prowess bestowed upon him by the Spirit of the Lord gave him the strength to perform mighty feats, such as tearing apart a young lion with his bare hands, killing a thousand Philistines with a donkey's jawbone, and carrying away the massive gate of Gaza when they thought he was trapped behind the city walls. Samson was widely feared because he was violent, cunning, and audacious. However, he was prone to fits of vengeance and lustful passion, which frequently drove him away from God and his Nazarite vows. According to Judges 14, Samson had set his sights on a young Philistine woman from Timnah and asked his mother and father to bring her to him as his wife. Judges chapter 14, verse 2. Although his parents nudged him to seek a Hebrew woman from among his relatives, Samson was headstrong that he marry this woman. Get her for me, for she looks to me, he insisted. Judges chapter 14, verse 3. On the surface, it appears that Samson was led by his desires with his eyes. However, neither he nor his parents realized that this was part of God's plan to use Samson to fight the Philistines. Judges chapter 14 verse 4. 
For a man set apart for God's service since birth, Samson made some questionable life decisions, ultimately proving that God can use a person in spite of himself. Samson went down to Timnah and saw a young Philistine woman there. Chapter 14, verse 1. God threw a curveball. He would use Samson's fascination with this woman to create an opportunity to deliver his people. God was providentially working uniquely in Samson's circumstances to accomplish his purposes. Importantly, though, a believer is not to use this passage to justify marrying an unbeliever. Samson's parents were right. The Lord had warned his people not to intermarry with the surrounding nations because they didn't worship the one true God. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 1 through 3. When the Lord your God brings you into the land you are entering to possess and drives out before you many nations, the Hittites, Girgashites, Amorites, Canaanites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites, seven nations larger and stronger than you, and when the Lord your God has delivered them over to you and you have defeated them, then you must destroy them totally. Make no treaty with them and show them no mercy. Do not intermarry with them. Do not give your daughters to their sons or take their daughters for your sons. A couple that is unequally yoked is likely to run into trouble. Samson went down to Timnah together with his father and mother. As they approached the vineyards of Timnah, suddenly a young lion came roaring toward him. The Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him so that he tore the lion apart with his bare hands as he might have torn a young goat. But he told neither his father nor his mother what he had done. Then he went down and talked with the woman, and he liked her. Sometime later, when he went back to marry her, he turned aside to look at the lion's carcass, and in it he saw a swarm of bees and some honey. He scooped out the honey with his hands and ate as he went along. When he rejoined his parents, he gave them some, and they too ate it. But he did not tell them that he had taken the honey from the lion's carcass. Judges chapter 14, verses 5 through 9. On the way to Timnah, where his bride-to-be lived, Samson was attacked by a young lion, and the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully on him, and they tore the lion apart with his bare hands. This was a clear sign that indeed he had been elected and empowered by God for a supernatural purpose. Samson blatantly ignored the law of Moses regarding unclean foods and took some of the honey. Now his father went down to see the woman, and there Samson held a feast, as was customary for young men. When the people saw him, they chose thirty men to be his companions. Let me tell you a riddle, Samson said to them. If you can give me the answer within the seven days of the feast, I will give you thirty linen garments and thirty sets of clothes. If you can't tell me the answer, you must give me thirty linen garments and thirty sets of clothes. Tell us your riddle, they said. Let's hear it. He replied, Out of the eater, something to eat. Out of the strong, something sweet. For three days, they could not give the answer. And what was this riddle Samson introduced? And out of the strong came something sweet. Judges chapter 14, verse 14. Samson was, of course, referring to the honey he had recently scooped from the lion's carcass, an event that his companions would have been unaware of. As a result, it was an impossible riddle to solve and an unfair wager to begin with. The Philistines, as one might expect, were unable to solve Samson's riddle. Frustrated, the Philistines begged Samson's wife to answer them, threatening to burn her and her father's house if she did not. Judges chapter 14, verse 15. Samson's wife then burst into tears, pleading with him to reveal the answer to his riddle, and after seven days, Samson relented, as he frequently did. His wife then delivered the response to the Philistines. With an answer in hand, the Philistines returned to Samson. Judges chapter 14, verses 16 through 18, King James Version. And Samson's wife wept before him and said, Thou dost but hate me, and lovest me not. Thou hast put forth a riddle unto the children of my people, and hast not told it to me. And he said to her, Behold, I have not told it to my father nor my mother, and shall I tell it to thee? And she wept before him the seven days, while their feast lasted. And it came to pass on the seventh day that he told her, because she lay sore upon him. 
And she told the riddle to the children of her people. And the men of the city said unto him on the seventh day, before the sun went down, What is sweeter than honey? And what is stronger than a lion? And he said unto them, If he had not plowed with my heifer, he had not found out my riddle. Samson, enraged that he had been duped, went to Ashkelon and killed thirty Philistines, demonstrating his penchant for vengeance and violence at the slightest provocation. Judges chapter 14, verse 19. Unfortunately, Samson's father-in-law assumed that Samson's rage and hatred of his wife had destroyed any chance of a successful marriage. He then gave Samson's wife to a friend. Judges chapter 14, verse 20. In response, Samson captured 300 foxes, tied their tails together, attached torches to their tails, and released them to destroy the Philistine fields and vineyards. Judges chapter 15, verses 1 through 5, King James Version. But it came to pass within a while after, in the time of wheat harvest, that Samson visited his wife with a kid, and he said, I will go to my wife into the chamber. But her father would not suffer him to go in. And her father said, I verily thought that thou hadst utterly hated her. Therefore I gave her to thy companion. Is not her younger sister fairer than she? Take her, I pray thee, instead of her. And Samson said concerning them, Now shall I be more blameless than the Philistines, though I do them a displeasure. And Samson went and caught three hundred foxes, and took firebrands, and turned tail to tail, and put a firebrand in the midst between two tails. And when he had set the brands on fire, he let them go into the standing corn of the Philistines, and burn up both the shocks and also standing cord with the vineyards and olives. Unlike the slaying of the thirty Philistines who had duped him and answered his riddle, this was not an irrational outburst of rage or passion. Given the time it would have taken to catch, feed, and release 300 foxes, Samson displayed genuine patience, planning, and precision in seeking vengeance on his enemies. In many ways, Samson's one-man war against the Philistines was just getting started. When the Philistines discovered that it was Samson who had destroyed their fields, they retaliated by burning Samson's former wife and her father. Judges chapter 15, verse 6. As a result, the cycle continued. Samson's riddle has nothing particularly clever or witty about it. To begin with, it was not a traditional word puzzle or enigmatic saying. If anything, it was a trick question based on Samson's hidden knowledge. In many ways, Samson's riddle and the events that followed were only a foreshadowing of his ultimate device at the hands of Delilah. Judges chapter 16. Judges chapter 16, verses 19 through 25, King James Version. And she made him sleep upon her knees, and she called for a man, and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he wits not that the Lord was departed from him. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass, and he did grind in the prison house. Howbeit the hair on his head began to grow again after it was shaven. Then the Lord of the Philistines gathered them together to offer a great sacrifice unto Dagon their God and to rejoice. For they said, Our God hath delivered Samson our enemy into our hand. And when the people saw him, they praised their God, for they said, our God hath delivered into our hands our enemy, and the destroyer of our country, which slew many of us. And it came to pass, when their hearts were merry, that they said, Call for Samson, that he may make us sport. And they called for Samson out of the prison house, and he made them sport, and they set him between the pillars. Unfortunately, Samson did not learn his lesson from this encounter, and he fell into a far more sinister trap in the days that followed. This riddle is the only explicit example of a riddle in the Old Testament. It has been described as an unfair one, as it is apparently impossible to guess the answer without knowledge of Samson's encounter with the lion. This shows his edge in the riddle. However, his affliction for his wife, which God had placed in him, led to the fall of Samson and the later fall of the Philistines. Samson was a weak and foolish man despite his immense physical strength because he was lustful, deceptive, dishonest, hot-tempered, violent, and vengeful. 
We must remember, however, that God was willing to use even a morally flawed and inconsistent man like Samson to deliver his people and carry out his plans. Samson had a lot of potential. His feats of strength established him as a national hero and legend in Jewish history. His weakness, moral failures, and acts of self-indulgence, on the other hand, demonstrate that even earthly leaders and the most powerful among us are doomed to fall. As a result, we must always look to the story's true judge, deliverer, and hero. It is not, believe it or not, Samson. That title belongs solely to God. <music>